Okay, good morning. Uh, in this video, what I'd like to do is quickly recap for you step one, two, and three of the accounting cycle and model for you how to perform step number four. And at the end of the video, uh, you're going to kind of complete that uh, video summary sheet you have in front of you. Now, before I do so, though, I want to recap. This is the investor information for Viacom. Viacom, you probably, uh, right now when I said that, assume you've never heard of it, but I promise you, you have. Viacom is the name of the corporation that owns popular TV stations, such as Nickelodeon, MTV, BET, Comedy Central, VH1, et cetera, et cetera, and Spike. Okay, they're the company that owns all of those networks. So a pretty um, profitable company. Now, once per year, Viacom needs to produce their financial statements. And we're going to pull up their income statement. And on this income statement, it's going to list all of Viacom's revenues and all of Viacom's expenses. And when you subtract those two, we've learned they're going to generate a net income. Okay, so on this income statement, we can see Viacom's net income uh, for the last five years. Looks like just under two billion, just over two billion, one and a half billion, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, now where did this information come from? How did Viacom get to this final output that all external users need, banks, governments, investors, to make decisions? Well, they got to this output by implementing an effective accounting cycle, a series of steps accountants perform to keep accurate business records and to produce accurate information for external users. So in order to get this information, Viacom had to do steps that you performed in the Mount Nebo accounting uh, simulation. Okay, so let's review. Step number one, collect and verify source documents. And we did that. All these different kinds of source documents businesses have. Invoices, check stubs, receipts, sales invoices, um, purchase invoices, memos. And then when they collect them, they need to verify them. Is, is this accurate? Did we authorize this purchase? Is the amount of goods we received, does that match what's listed on the receipt or the invoice? That's step one. Step two, we analyze these source documents. In the real world, you have to analyze proof that transactions have occurred. They're not written out to you in sentence structure. And when you analyze these, you have to ask yourself certain questions. What accounts are affected? Which account is going up? Which account is going down? And how are those accounts classified? And to help you in that, you use a business's chart of accounts. This customized way of organizing every account businesses have listed in order by the accounting equation. Assets, liabilities, owner's equity, then your revenues, then your expenses. And every business can set this up according to their needs. So, we analyze these source documents, and based on our analysis, we select accounts that we think were impacted from the business's chart of accounts. Then, based on the rules of debits and credits, we can determine, all right, this account's going up, so it's debited, this account's going up, so it's credited, or vice versa. And then we record that information in step number three, the general journal. This chronological record, chronological record by date, March 1st, March 2nd, March 5th, March 6th, March 7th, etc., etc., where all the details of every business transaction are recorded. It's the only place in business where you can see every part of a transaction, which accounts are impacted and whether they're being debited, which accounts are being impacted and whether they're being credited, and the proof. Okay, so it allows you to see the big picture, but it's not specific enough. If I wanted to know, hey, Johnny account, how much money do we have in the cash and bank account? He's not going to be able to determine that from this general journal. And if he can, it's going to take him a really long time. He's going to have to go line by line by line by line to determine it. So it's not good in that regard. Enter step number four, which is called posting. In step number four, we're going to post or transfer information from our general journal into individual ledger accounts. These are ledgers. This is the cash and bank ledger. Here's the Ford delivery truck ledger. The account payable ledger. In other words, we're going to have a ledger for every account in our chart of accounts we're going to have a ledger for. And inside that ledger, it's going to be able to show us what is the balance of that account and what kind of transactions has that account been um, involved with. So let me model for you a couple 
then I'll stop the video, you're going to summarize the video, and then you're going to practice some of these on your own. Okay? So, all we do, it could not be any more easier for people to perform. You transfer every transaction line by line. Literally line by line. So first, on March 1st, cash was debited for $50,000. So now, since cash was affected, I'm going to find the cash ledger account. It's going to be the very first one. And now I'm going to type in my date, March 1st. Description is going to be the proof or the source document. Um, that was uh, Memo 101. And you see two sets of columns here. The very first set, the first set of debits and credits, all we're doing is we're transferring. Okay? So if you notice, in this first transaction, cash and bank was debited 50000 Okay? It was debited for 50000 So we're going to record that in the first debit listed. So the first sets of debits and credits represent whatever happened in the general journal in that particular transaction. The second set's asking, okay, based on what just happened, what is the new updated balance? Well, since this is the first transaction, the new updated balance has to be $50,000 as a debit because that's the only transaction that takes place. Now we're going to go and we're just going to do the next one. Mr. Sandler Capital was credited for $50,000, proof, memo one. So now I'm going to find the Mr. Sandler Capital account I'm going to write in the, the date, March 1st. The description was memo number one. And this transaction was 50000 on the credit. Okay, again, first sets of debits and credits relate to the specific transaction listed in the journal. Second set, you need to ask yourself, based on what just happened, what's the new balance? Well, since this is the first transaction um, impacted, the balance just gets carried forward. Okay, that's it. Let's do another one. Moving right down the line. On March 2nd, cash was debited. In other words, we gained 20 grand of cash on March 2nd. How do we know? Proof, receipt 101. So March 2nd, cash 20 grand, receipt 101. So let's go back to the cash ledger. Let's type in March 2nd. Description is the proof, receipt 101. Um, that debit was for 20,000. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky. Not tricky, but you got to think. Our current cash and bank balance is 50000 How do we know? That's what this is telling us right here. We just debited another transaction for 20. In other words, cash and bank just went up. That's what debits mean for assets. So since we have 50 grand already in our bank account, we're adding 20 grand. Our new balance is 70 grand. Now it's up to date. So if the accountant wants to look, how much money do we have in the cash and bank? I don't know. Let's go look at the cash and bank ledger. $70,000. Okay? Next. Account payable was credited for $20,000 on March 2nd. Proof, receipt 101. So let's go to account payable. Date, March 2nd. Description is the proof. So receipt 101. We credited in the above transaction, so we're going to credit it here. Second set is what is the new adjusted balance? Well, since this is the only transaction, that just gets carried forward. And let's just do one more, and then I'm going to stop. Pumpkin seeds expense. On March 5th, our expense pumpkin seeds went up $1,900. Proof, check 101. Let's go find our pumpkin seeds expense account. That was March 5th. Description was the proof. That was check number 101. And that went up $1,500. Since we debited it in the general journal, we're going to debit in the first set here. What's the new balance? Well, since that's the first transaction, $1,500 just gets carried over. And let's do one last one for you. This is going to be another cash and bank. Cash and bank was credited $1,900 on March 5th. How do we know? Well, the proof was check 101. So let's go to cash and bank. Enter in the new date, March 5th. Our description is the proof. Check 101. We lost cash, so we credited it up above for 1500 Now, here's where it gets tricky. We have a current balance of 70000 We just credited cash. We know since cash is an asset, assets are decreased as credits. So if I'm crediting cash, my cash account's balance has to go down. So now here I'm going to just subtract these two. 70000 minus 1500 gives us 68500 Why do I record that on the debit balance? 
because cash still has a balance, a positive balance, an increased balance or a normal balance of 68500 The only time I'd ever record something here is if the business was going bankrupt and they were losing money. It was in the negative. Okay? We're not in the negative, we're in the positive. So cash and bank is always going to have a balance here on the debit side because that's its normal balance side. Okay? So this is step four of the accounting cycle. We still need to learn step five. Uh, we're going to skip to step six and then we'll, we'll close out with step seven and eight. And after we do step eight, that's, that's what's going to generate for us this final financial document that all external users rely on to make decisions. Okay? All right, go ahead and close out the video, uh, complete the summary sheet, and then we're going to practice it on your own.